Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 21 Liverpool career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead. We are finishing off the month of September in today's episode. We're up first, we take on Chelsea in the Premier League at home. We then two days later take on Lazio in our second game in our Champions League group stage. We then move into the month of October where we have a couple of days off before we take on Wolverhampton Wanderers away from home in the Premier League. Now, we touched up on, like we do at the end of every episode, as to which two games in the next episode we're going to play and which one we're going to simulate. We decided we would play the game against Frank Lampard's Chelsea because, of course, Chelsea are a top six side and we want to make sure we're getting the three points there. We want to make sure we're getting the three points when we come up against Lazio because I said if we managed to get the three points in the first game, which we did against FCC on beating them 4-0, if we manage to beat Lazio at another three points, meaning potentially the third game in our Champions League group stage, we could just simulate because lose, win or even draw, it won't matter too much because then we reset and we play three games again, where if we play two of them and get the wins there, we should guarantee ourselves a place in the knockout stages of the Champions League, which then of course leaves Wolverhampton Wanderers for today's simulated game, which I am very happy to do. Although it's away from home and Wolves are a great team, I think that it puts us in a much better situation because then when you look at the episode after this one, we've got Sheffield United at home in the Premier League. We've then got a game in the Champions League group stages and then a game against Brighton at home in the Premier League. We can focus in that, uh, that episode on just playing the two Premier League games and simulating the game in the Champions League because it doesn't matter win, draw or lose what the outcome is. Of course, we want to get wins, but we can risk simulating it. But up first, we are taking on Frank Lampard's Chelsea. It is certainly going to be a difficult game. But before we dive into today's episode and get the games underway, we best head over to the Common Conference. Well, yeah, of course, every team knows it. Every fan knows it. Most importantly, all the players know it. We can only put out, as a manager, 11 players onto a pitch. And of course, this team is much bigger than just 11 players and the bench players. We have players on the bench, we have players in the reserve. As for if a player wants to break into the starting 11, they need to show me in training that they're working hard. They need to prove to me when they get their chance to shine on the pitch. They need to prove to the fans that they are a type of player that will get out there, non-stop running, pressing, do exactly what I need them to do. If they don't do that, then they're only letting themselves down of having a chance of breaking onto the bench or coming off from the bench into the actual starting 11. Of course, if a player comes to me and says, boss, I need to be in the starting 11, I need more game time, and they're not part, unfortunately, of my plans and future at Liverpool, and they're thinking of potentially handing in a transfer request, we'll sit down and discuss, because of course, I don't want any player to hand in a transfer request and force a move. If a player, like for example, when I sat down with Jerdan Shaqiri, we, we had a quick chat in my office, and Shaqiri said, look, he, he wants to be coming on every game, at least as a sub, and that's not something, unfortunately, I could offer him. We were obviously looking at bringing in Ismail Iksar, which we have now to sit behind Mo Salah. We've got the young man, Elliot, who's making his way through the rankings, coming from um, a youth academy straight into the start, and 11 as such, he's now in the senior team. So for me to say to Shaqiri, I can promise you game time and minutes on the pitch, it's something that unfortunately I couldn't do. We had a civil chat about it, there was no heat, there was no hate towards it, and Shaqiri decided, look, I think it's best that I go somewhere else so I can get my game time and also improve my career. And I can't stop a player doing that. At the end of the day, every single one of these players wants to be out on the pitch, playing for the fans, playing for themselves, playing for their family, playing for their loved ones and showing what ability and skill they have. Unfortunately, Jadon Shaqiri, he just unfortunately wasn't part of my plans. And if a player comes to me and isn't happy about getting game time and they're not part of my plans, I'll certainly sit down, have a civilised, calm chat with them and sort of work out whether it might be best for them to go on loan and maybe they have a future here at Liverpool. With Jadon Shaqiri, unfortunately, he wanted a lot of game time. Even if I put him out on loan for a year in the future, he's still not part of my plans when we bring in Saar. And Saar was always going to be coming into play behind Mo Salah. So if Mo Salah is fatigued or needs to come off at half-time, picks up an injury, Saar will be the man slotting in there. But in Shaqiri, basically down to the third right winger. We discussed it. He said he'd rather move on. 
we let clubs know that we're interested in him, that he is up now for sale. And of course, we've now sold him to Juventus. That's going to go for every player in this team. Of course, if there's a player that I want to keep hold of and they are part of my plans and could break into the starting eleven in the future, then 100% they'll be staying. Maybe I'll put them out on loan for six months. Maybe I'll put them out for a year just to get experience, just to get game time. But if they are part of my long-term plans, they're a player that I don't want to sell. Jadon Shakiri, unfortunately, wasn't that. But as for any other players, if players aren't happy with the amount of game time that they're getting, or they're not happy that they're not getting onto the bench and they're still stuck in the reserves, as long as they train hard, there's no reason why that can't change week in and week out. And I always say to my players, if you've got an issue, come and knock on the office, come and sit down, come and have a chat with me, and we'll sort something out. And then we can both be on the same page and sort of know the path that each player and, of course, the manager myself wants to take with that individual player. Yeah, well, it was such a great feeling for Lewis Morton the other day. I finally got to be his mum and dad as he came over to sign a full contract for Liverpool. He's now moved from the Youth Academy. I could already see what ability he had in the Youth Academy. We were speaking with the board. I was telling them that he's doing really well in training. He's playing in the under-23s. He's doing wonders in the midfield. He came in with his mum and dad to sign a senior contract. And of course, now, yeah, he is a senior Liverpool player. He probably won't break into the starting eleven just yet. I don't want to rush him. Obviously, he's been playing in the under-23s, which is great. I don't just want to throw him in sort of at the deep end. We need to work with him and, and train with him and sort of get him up to speed as to what I want the team and the team that I put out to do on the field. I think as long as he trains hard and works hard, there's no reason why he won't break into this team. The fans are obviously raving about him, so I'm sure it won't be long before we're seeing him in games in like the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. We'll start him off slowly, try and break him into the team. But obviously there's loads of rumours about, is this man the next Steven Gerrard? Of course, he's the next Steven Gerrard with a left foot. He's a fantastic player. And uh, I really look forward to seeing what he can uh, produce at Liverpool. And I think he is going to be a superstar here. So one that we definitely want to keep hold of. One that we want to work very closely with. And of course, meeting his mum and dad when he signed his contract. Lovely people. Really good upbringing. And uh, I'm hoping he's going to be a superstar under me at Liverpool. Well, yeah, if I'm to quote the ex-Liverpool manager, boom. What more can I say? We struggled early on in the season at keeping a clean sheet. Obviously, we've just come back from pre-season. We were letting in a couple too many goals that I would have liked. Between Alisson, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent, Robertson, they have to sort it out. They have to get into a pattern. They have to gel well together. And although, yes, they gelled very well last season, they went on to win the Premier League. They've had a break. They've had their holidays. We've had COVID. They've been trading at home. They haven't been around each other and sort of been able to work with each other. So, a little bit of a shaky start. But yes, the last three games, we did manage to keep clean sheets, which I am very happy about. Hoping throughout the next couple of weeks we can keep some more clean sheets. Allison seems to be getting in great form. Van Dijk and Gomez on the same page, talking to each other. Robertson and Trent making those runs up the wing. Also tracking back as I need them to. We seem to be playing great football at the moment. And I just think, as well as me being the manager and coming in and understanding the mechanics of the defending of this team, sort of tweaking it to how I want them to defend, I think we're starting to all sort of be on the same page. You know, how Jürgen Klopp wanted them to defend and the runs they made and the position they were in. Obviously, Jürgen Klopp played... One of the main things that caught a lot of people last season was the offside trap. Obviously, Joe Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson and Trent would push forwards and they'd catch a lot of players offside. Eventually, teams are going to click onto this. They're going to be waiting on the shoulder of the last man, waiting on Van Dijk or Gomez. And when it's time to go, boom, they go. Through they go. And before you know it, the one-on-one -on -one with Alisson or Adrian or whoever is between the sticks. And it's a one-on-one -on -one challenge. And normally, 90% of the time, the ball ends up in the back of the net. It's as simple as that. That's what the strikers and central attacking midfielders and wingers, they learn to do. They practice one-on-ones over and over again. They study which way the goalkeeper normally dives to make sure that they can get a goal. So I think me coming in to sort of change that up and not sort of run with the offside trap and more the fact just man mark and stand your ground. Don't go to ground with slide tackles because I've told the lads so many times. Once you go to ground... It's a lot more difficult to get up, recover, and get back to your man. If you stay on your feet and sort of jostle them and just let them know that you're there, it causes problems for the strikers, the wingers, the central attacking midfielders, the centres, mids. This is what we need to be doing. And obviously, it's showing over the last three games that we have managed to keep clean sheets. We are scoring plenty of goals. And I hope we can continue this throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, funny enough, it was only yesterday morning that I was watching on Twitter a Pats and Daka Welcome to Liverpool compilation. He has hit 
the ground running. And I said to the board and also the transfer committee, what a signing we have brought in. It's not usual for a player to sort of come into the team and just fit. He just slotted right in. He was like the last piece of the jigsaw. Normally it takes a couple of weeks to work out the players around him, what they do, where he needs to be, positioning, stuff like that. But Pats and Daka for me is the full package. Of course, we're looking at moving on Rian Brewster. Had to bring in a striker to make sure I'm keeping the numbers up. We brought Pats and Daka in. And if I'm honest, I'm, I'm over the moon with him. I'm seeing all over social media. We've seen Daka trending when he scored against Sheffield United. We've seen compilations, goal compilations, having said that, although he's only started twice as a substitute and had a start for Liverpool once. And we're already getting goal compilations, skill compilations, people analysing the runs that he makes, how he's just fitted into this team. He's got Mo Salah and Manny either side of him, Diego Jota, or Harvey Elliott on the right, Saar on the right, whatever player is either side of him, he just tends to fit, he's talking with them, he's communicating, if the ball comes in but it's not a great ball, he's still putting his hand up, thanking for the ball in, thanking his teammates for getting the assists, thanking them for helping him get goals, thanking him to sort of putting him in the right position at the right time, he's an incredible player and I honestly couldn't have asked for a better player to come in and hit the ground like Pats and Daka has. I've signed many players over the years and sometimes it can take two to three weeks sometimes it can take two to three months sometimes it takes a player a whole season to adjust first of all to the premier league adjust to the team around them adjust to the fans obviously we've got great fans here at anfield and it's a very noisy and loud and energetic stadium to come in and have that as a player sometimes it can be a lot of pressure and sometimes it can make you crumble but pat sandaka he's took it on the chin he loves the crowd getting behind him you can see the smile on his face and waving at the fans and waving to his family in the, uh, the new stand. It's just unbelievable what Pats and Dakar has done. And I just hope that he can keep it up throughout this season. If he keeps scoring and getting assists the way he is, I think he'll potentially be a superstar at Liverpool. Right, and I just want to say thank you very much to everyone that did use the hashtag a comment conference. Unfortunately this week, you guys haven't seen the episode before this one, so I haven't been able to put it out. So I can't go through social media and read out the usual comments because there isn't any. And some of those hashtag comment conferences because I recorded yesterday and I haven't edited that video and uploaded it, there was no comment conferences other than the first one from Panther, which of course I just used because I missed it on another episode. He was a little bit late to the party, so I used that. The other three about Lewis Martin, the last three game, uh, Lewis Martin, the last three games, and the fans raving about Pats and Daka. I made that up myself like I did in the first episode. Sometimes that's just the way it is, guys. I explain to you in the big channel updates that sometimes I want to grind out a couple of episodes. I might record twice in a day. I might record twice over two days. And sometimes I haven't uploaded the last episode, so I haven't got comments to go through. I haven't got any hashtag comment conferences. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But I can still make up comments. I just can't read out your comments that you've left that may not be using hashtag comment conference because, well, the last video isn't up. But hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, hashtag comment conference and if you do want to leave any comments for the next episode make sure you drop them down below using the hashtag comment conference i don't know how many times i've just said it but if you drink and take a shot every time i say comment conference and you'll probably be drunk by now but i just want to say thank you so much for everyone that has jumped on this original idea it seems to be getting great feedback a lot of you guys loving it a lot of you telling me brad the quality and the effort you're putting in compared to some of the other creators that are making fifa 21 career mode content is outstanding you're a, a whole tier above the rest and that's what i've told you guys from the start everyone else is here and i want to be here i'm not here to just blend in copy and do what others do and just run a career mode i'm here to take over and make it the best career mode on fifa 21 and on youtube for you guys to watch and it seems from the feedback i'm doing just that so honestly from the bottom of my heart Thank you so much for all the feedback. Thank you so much for the love and continue to show me that throughout this Liverpool career mode on FIFA 21. And without any further ado, let's get in to take on Frank Lampard's Chelsea. I'm excited for this. I certainly know it's going to be a sort of difficult game. And I'll tell you what, they are not looking at the fittest team at all. We've got Werner, Zaya, Kovacic, Silva, James, Tsankov, Sankangov, however you pronounce his name, Ginter. I didn't even know they had Ginter and he's already wearing the captain's armband. Not someone like Kante or, you know, someone that's been there long term. They've got Marcelo at left back. They've clearly spent their money. They've got Kepa between the sticks, but I did manually transfer Mendy to them. But Frank's obviously decided to go with Kepa for this one. And that's fine by us because he left in plenty of goals. So hopefully we'll score plenty of goals. We are at Anfield, the home fans behind us. I'm sure it is going to be a cricket score. But you can now see the lineup. We've gone with Sadio Mane out on the left wing. 
Bobby Firmino striker Salah out on the right wing. Gini Wijnaldum linking up with the skipper Jordan Henderson in the central midfield roles. A little deeper we've got Fabinho in the central defence and midfield. And then Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez and Trent at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Let's get into this game against Frank Lampard's Chelsea. And let's keep those three points and hopefully keep our fingers crossed that in today's episode, West Ham drop a couple of points. Here we go, Bobby Firmino getting those legs warmed up. Mo Salah, Mane, all three are in great form at the moment. We've got great players to come in from the bench to cause problems to Chelsea. We know that they're a little bit fatigued, a little bit low in energy, so we'll know where to exploit them, especially down the right side. James isn't looking too great at right back. Right centre back is Silva. Yes, he's one of the most world-class defenders we've ever seen. I personally think he's a little bit past it. He hasn't got the legs anymore. And with Man 8 Mo and Bobby running at him, if they get past them, they're in serious trouble. Mateus Ginter winning the captain's armband for Chelsea is a little bit of a strange one and a little bit unrealistic. But I suppose it's down to Frank what he wants to do. But it is going to be Bobby Firmino to get us kicked off in his first half period. Come on, fans. Come on, players. Let's get this stadium bouncing. Pressure them. There's Conte. Uh-oh. Got to be careful now. Don't let Werner get on the right side. Come on, Van Dijk. Hold them off. Fall through the middle. Zayax there to 1-0 Chelsea. Now they have their opener, and now they can celebrate. Well, we're goal there by Chelsea. Let one twos between Zayak and Timo Werner. And it's easily put through. We don't manage in our fourth game on the bounce to unfortunately keep a clean sheet. Robertson. Genie, get over that far side now for Bobby Henderson making that run. Let's go, Mo. I'll slide you in behind. Mo Salah now going to get across. He comes across. Go on, Mo. Oh, he's missed it. Keep on him. Oh, he's still coming forward. Still coming forward. Slide down. It's a great tackle, Van Dijk. The ball's still going to come well done, Allison. You've got to get rid of that. Well done, Gomez. Well done, Gomez. Let that go out. And I think if we can't win that back as Kante looks to clear it out, the referee is going to blow for half time at Anfield. Straight away, there's an issue in this team. It's Bobby Firmino. Yes, he's doing great coming back and collecting the ball, but he's not getting into the positions where he needs to put the ball into him. We may have to look at changing something up in this second half. For now, due to the fitness of Chelsea, I'm thinking this team are going to cause some problems as they now run out of stamina as it is Chelsea to get us kicked off in this second half period. We'll have to see what we can do in the next 10, 15 minutes. Play out through now. Beautiful. Go on, Genie, on your bike. Go on, Genie. Oh, I've just got no options. Just got no options. Come on, Robbo on the overlap. Get that through to Robbo. We're going to go to Bobby instead. We're now going to go to Genie. Laser off now. Bobby Firmino. Beautiful bit of football. It's in off the post. It's 1 1. Come on. We talked about that man right on half time that he was the problem. He wasn't getting in to the positions I needed. He obviously heard me, had a word in at half time. And look at this football, it's beautiful. We tear apart the Chelsea defence. Bobby Firmino gets in behind. One on one with the keeper. And Bobby Firmino does what Bobby Firmino does best. And that is putting it past the keeper and in to the back of the net. Now we need to push on and look for this win. Oh, we've got to be careful of the passing. Here's Tim O'Vern. He's now looking for that run of conversation. It's a great save from Allison. Paul Van Dijk across as quick as a could. Hopefully a little bit of pressure from him. Sort of put him off a little bit as he looked to hit that ball. So you can see me there pulling Van Dijk across. Telling him to get on that man. Thiago Silva pings one over the top. We've got to win this. Come on. We need to take it off them. Moses now on the pitch. Oh, and Timo Werner has turned them. It's beautiful. Timo Werner has turned them. Well done, Gomez. Let's go, Alisson. Well done. That was huge. That was huge. It's Thiago. Plays it through now to Trent. Come on, Salah. I need you on that bike. I need you on that bike. Get over the top. And here we go. I'm going to have Mane towards the back post. I've just got to slide a nice ball in for Sadio Mane to ball. Home! Sadio Mane gets there. It's 2 1. Sadio Mane. 2 1. He celebrates with the fans. It's a great ball there. It's a bit of a heavy ball, actually, from Mo Salah. I think uh, Mane realises I've just got to get lower here. Just get my foot to it, put the angle on it to try and get it past Kepa. It was a really lethal, heavy boy. You can see me celebrating there. I'm over the moon. Four goals in the Premier League for Sadio Mane. And we have taken the lead in the 76th. Come on, lads. We need to retain these three points. 
Come on, six minutes, lads. Let's find the third and put this game well and truly to bed. Fabinho plays it through now to Genie. Drops it to Minamino. Turns his man very well. Minamino through on goal. Minamino. It's a great save from Kepa. They're not really sure what hit them anymore. Come on. It's Thiago. Plays the ball in now to Minamino. Plays it ahead now. And Mo Salah on that left foot. Mo Salah! Oh, it's just wide a goal. Thiago. Back now to Mo Salah. Mo Salah looks to play that wide. Raf is all over that one. Come on, Raf. You've got to blow the whistle here. Yes! It's a game where we have to dig deep. We have to take our chances. And we did just that. Shaking the hands with Frank Lampard. Clapping. Thank you to all the fans, you guys at home that are here right now. It was a great result. It was a great, great result. Reese James dived for that one, didn't he? Dived for it. Allison gets across. It was over in the end, but what a game. What a game. I'm so glad that at halftime when he had the word with Bobby Firmino, he certainly got out there and played a whole different game. You can see, very level. We just took our chances a lot better than Chelsea. Don't get me wrong. The defenders and Allison kept us out and really kept us in that game. There was a, a couple of close shaves, but we managed to get the result that we deserved. We had eight shots, four on target. Chelsea had seven shots, four on target. Both teams having the same amount of shots on target. Just luckily for us, we put two in the back of the net. They only managed one. Bobby Firmino picks up man of the match for us with an eight-point rating. A little bit lower than I would have liked. I like to see players 8.5 and above, and that really shows me that we've had a good game. Clearly, looking at the stats there, we didn't have the best of games, which I fully understand. Sometimes you have these types of games where you have to dig deep. It's a bit of a scrappy result, but you know what? Getting the result is the important thing. We beat Chelsea 2 1. We bagged the three points, and we continue our amazing running form in the Premier League. So up next, we take on Lazio for our second game in our Champions League group stage. You can see that Lazio took on a voluntary in their first game, managed to get a win. We took on FCC on, we managed to get a win. So it's both us and Lazio who are currently top on three points. We get the win over them, we go to six points. I hope Voluntari and Sion get a draw amongst themselves because that would be great because it means when we do simulate the game against Voluntari, as long as we get a win and Lazio drop some more points... It should be probably us and Lazio going through to the knockout stages, which I would be very, very happy about. We are starting to climb up the table when it comes to my overall manager rating. We've gone now from a 64 in the last episode to 66 when I brought Lewis Morton through to the senior team. And then from today, we've gone from a 66 to a 67. I'd like to get it back to a 70 plus by the end of today's episode, whether that is possible. Because when I'm in the red zone, I have got a risk here of the board sacking me and that is not something that i want to happen i think i'm doing great things here at the club it'd be a shame for them to think do you know what we've got to let brad go he's not doing the job we want i have looked over the fan objectives realistically a lot of them are long term so winning the champions league miles away from that winning the premier league miles away from that winning the fa cup miles away from winning that the other ones like signing two players that have a, a stronger overall than what's currently in their position now we've done that so we ticked that off signed three south american players i didn't really want to do that but maybe we have to look at doing that in january if it's still causing us a problem and we're still sort of in the red zone but you can now see the team we're putting out against latio a little bit of fatigue amongst a couple of players in fabinho gomez and trent but i'm pretty happy with the lineup i think bringing tiago in ahead of genie just because of fitness tiago is going to bring a lot to the team and i think in that second half against chelsea when i did bring him on in the 70th minute even just the 20 minutes he played, the runs he was making, the balls he was playing, winning the ball back, he was a real solid player. So I'm looking forward to seeing him boss the midfield with the skipper Jordan Henderson against Lazio. But we've gone with Diego Jota out on the left wing. Bobby Firmino, striker, Ismail Sarr out on the right wing. Thiago linking up with the skipper Jordan Henderson in the central midfield. Rolls a little deeper. We've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield. Then Robertson, Kabak, Gomez and Trent at the back with Allison between the sticks. Let's get into this game against Lazio. Bag the three points, get a decent win, give you guys plenty of highlights to watch and enjoy, and then we can turn our focus to the Wolverhampton game for today's simulated match. Come on, lads, this All is big. Oh, Lucas Leiva, Lucas Leiva the ex Liverpool Club. man. God, I miss that man. And look at I miss that man so much. I get that he had to go, unfortunately, he's not a good enough player to be in the Liverpool team, but oh my, what a player. Lazio versus Liverpool. The men in the red shirt. I'm excited for this one. Really, really excited. 
And Lucas Leiva will have told his teammates how we are about to boss the game because that is certainly what we are about to do as it is going to be Lazio to get us kicked off in this first half period. All over the top, let's go Robbo, win it. Come on Robbo, fight for it. Ball through there, to get ball through. Same sort of goal we conceded against Chelsea. Correa puts her in the back of the net. Same sort of goal. It was simple. Split the defence. Ball through. There's the run. Fabinho doesn't stay with his runner. And he's one-on-one -on -one with Allison. It's not good enough, lads. We'd need to be practising there on the training ground. Certainly be having the lads a word with the lads here at half-time. Come on, Kabak. Careful. Trent's there. Come on, Trent needs to win that. It's going to come through now. Kabak's going to get there. Well done, Kabak. Well done, Ozan. Really got back there just to hoof that one out. All over the top, and here comes the counter attack once again. Come on. He's going to keep it in. Come on, Robbo. You've let him get on your good side here, Robbo. You've let him get on your good side. Lucas Leiva! Lucas Leiva scores against his former club. But for us, it's unlucky. Lucas Leiva makes it 2 0. Unbelievable. Lazio coming out here and playing some real good football. We're playing poor here. Well done, Robert. Well done. Let's move here, lads. Let's move. Come on, Henderson. Move. Look at the space you've got. Run into that space and put that ball home. And Jordan Henderson misses. We're still here, though. There's Bobby Firmino. A little bit of skill. Bobby Firmino through a goal. Bobby Firmino. Referee. Hit it, Jota. He's missed it. Oh, Diego Jota. How? It's a great chance. It should end up in the top right corner. Come on, we're starting to, we're starting to put this together now, lads. Come on. Starting to put this together. Let's make it happen. All over the top. Uh-oh. He's through. Let's go, Kabak. Well done. Come on, keep it. Three, nil, Lazio. How do I not come away with that ball? Gomez, why are you backing off? Help him out. It's three now. I, I honestly cannot believe this. Three, nil. So, let's move. So, we give the ball away. Come on, Fabinho. Win that ball back. No, Lucas is going to get round them. We're going in at half time. Three, nil down here, lads. Well, I'm not quite sure what's happened to Roberto Firmino. In He's this playing game. poor again. I had a word with him at half time last time, and he did come out and play a lot better. I can't afford to do that this time. We cannot afford to lose 3 0 to Lazio. If I can pull this back and get a draw, I'll be happy. So, Bobby, unfortunately, now going off for Pats and Daka. I'm going to bring Manny on for Diego Jota. I've got to start bringing some of the big guns on now. Thiago's okay. He's looking a little bit worse for ways on a yellow. He's not the, He's only got 78% fitness. We're just, we're just going to have to go with this. We need to keep someone on the pitch that can make something happen. And Thiago is that man, especially with Pats and Daka now coming on the pitch as he gets us kicked off in the second half period. We need to start moving here now, lads. Come on, Daka, let's move. Come on, Daka, get there. Yes, go, Daka. Let's go. Come on, it's Saw. Come on. I need you to your money. We're not going to get there. It's going to be Saw on his own. Saw. Ball kicked out. Let's go for Fabinho. No, he's going to get there. Get over the top, lads. Get over the top. Gomez in our ball. Oh, my way. What a save. Well done. Come on. Thiago. No. Spot to run there. We've now got it up to Manny, who's now making his way into the middle of the pitch. Come on, Manny. Feed that through now to Henderson. We've now got Saw over this far side. This time, Saw, you've got to bury it. Thiago. Now to Manny. Come on, Manny. This is our last chance. Come on, Manny. Let's at least get something back here. Something needs... And so the final whistle, well it was one step forward last time, it's one step back on this occasion. What does it mean for the chances of qualifying for the knockout stages league? Well you have to say that's complacent, you really do. After a fabulous Ouch. start in game one, back to the drawing board for the coaches and the players. All that momentum dumped into the dustbin. Well, his performance in this particular... Yeah, they're not wrong there, all the momentum. Well, he played well. All the confidence. What a good performance from him. Dumped into the dustbin. You're not wrong. 
Wow. We, we just couldn't handle Lazio. Couldn't handle it. I think sharpness is definitely an issue for us right now. Some of the passes were very sloppy. You got someone like Bobby Firmino getting man of the match for us with a 7.7 .7 rating. A very poor performance throughout this whole Liverpool team. When I get back in the dressing room, I'll be telling the lads, what was that? Because that was absolutely shocking. Five shots for Lazio, all five on target. Very clinical. Three in the back of the net. We had eight shots, three on target. We didn't put any in the back of the net. That is a very, very poor, poor result. Well, I'm not quite sure and can't really put my finger on what went so wrong there against Lazio. Maybe it was the fact we took Van Dijk off the team. Maybe it's the fact we took the player that is in the best form and probably the best player on the pitch for Liverpool at the moment. Do you know why now they're off the team? I have no idea. But unfortunately, coming up to this game against Wolves, we got a very, uh, how should I put it? A difficult email to read. Sadio Mane picked up an injury in training. Now, luckily, I think it's only for about 10 days, they said. So, he's only going to miss the Wolves game. But in a game like we just played against Lazio, we need to bounce back. I needed my front three to be firing on all cylinders. Which means Diego Jota is going to be in at left wing for him. We could have done with Mane in this game. I feel like sometimes Mane, although he, he's in great form at the moment, he can have a little bit of dips here and there where he doesn't play his best football. But going into this game against Wolves, he was a player that I really wanted to have. Now, yes, we've got Genie back on the team. We've got Van Dijk back on the team. I'm hoping Diego Jota can just pick up, unfortunately, what we've lost in Sadio Mane. You can now see the lineup. We've gone with Diego Jota out wide on the left wing. Bobby Firmino at striker. Salah out on the right wing. Genie you know Wijnaldum linking up with the skipper Jordan Henderson in the central midfield. Rolls a little deeper. We've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield. Then Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez and Trent at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Let's get into this simulated game. We're going to have to hope we can sort of by half time see this game out. They've got Nelson Semedu or Semedu. We obviously uh, manually transferred him to Wolves at the start of the season. Podence and Raul Jimenez up top is going to be a difficult one, but it is Wolves to get us kicked off in this first half period. Come on, Redman. Come on, Moten back and go. Oh, beautiful on the inside. Beautiful. There goes Henderson now. Come on, Hendo. Pings it over now to Genie. Genie tries to get past into Henderson. It's a great save by Roy Patricio. Corner taken quickly again. Ball in. Van Dijk's there. It's over the bar. Come on, Redman. This is better. Come on. Yeah, Henderson's bossing it at the moment. It's Genie. Van Dijk. Genie. Come on, let's find the right passes here, lads. Here we go. Henderson turns his man. Go up the line now. Here we go. Go back to Salah. Here comes Salah now. Ball in. To Henderson. It's a great save from Roy Patricio again. Keep fighting for it. Keep fighting. Win the header. It's our play at our ball. No, it's their ball. It must have come off Robbo. Come on, Robbo. Don't let them put that ball in. Come on, take it off from Van Dijk. Well done, great ball. Let's move, lads. Oh, and as we look to move, the referee is going to blow for half time. Very level on the possession. 51 to 49. We've had four shots, two chances. They've had two shots, no chances. Happy to resume and get back into the second half. Come on, Bobby. Get us kicked off. We can't afford a draw here. We are currently top of the Premier League right now. We need to push on and get these three points. Come on, Hendo. Find the pass. Nicely done. Find the pass again. Come on, Bobby. Let's win it back. Nicely done. Find the pass. Go to Bobby if we can. Is Salah dancing? Henderson, Bobby! Yes! Come on! Come on! Well done, Bobby. In the 55th, he slots home. Fitness, we could probably do making a couple of changes. Let's get that into Jota there. Get it to Jota. Get it to Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Into Henderson. Bobby! 2 0. Come on, Melner. Boss that midfield for me. Let's put that over the top there. Nicely done. There's Daka. Go on, Daka. Make a great run there. Let's go over to Jota. Beautiful in back to Daka. Is Robertson. Robertson find that pass. Don't lose it. Ball in. It's going to fall to Milner. To Dakar. Tried to put the ball into Minamino. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. It's out of play. Come on. Seven minutes. This is a great result here, lads. Great result. Let's keep it up. Milner. Fabinho. Dakar. Over now to Genie. Come on, Genie. Find that pass. It's Milner. Little passes here between Genie and Milner. Fabinho. Milner. Come on. Play it into Dakar. Dakar. Turn your man. Dakar's in behind. Oh, it's a great save from Roy Patricio. Corner taken quickly from Milner here in the 90th minute. Let's get the ball back in, Milner. Get the ball back in. Beautiful. It's Fabinho. Are we just holding it up? Are we just going to hold it? Come on, Milner. Get that ball in. Some Robbo. Get the ball in. We're just going to hold it. We're just holding it. And the referee blows. It's full time. We're so it's Bobby Firmino that gets us the win over Wolves. 66% of the ball. 100%. We had a lot more from what I see of the ball. Seven shots, five chances, two in the back of the net. 
Again, quiet word for Bobby at half time. Bobby, you're not doing what I need here. You need to get it in behind. Use your skill. Use your flair. Get in behind. Put the ball in the back of the net. In the 56th, he does just that. And in the 70th minute, he does just that. We're going to make a couple of changes in the 76th minute. We were already 2 0 up. But it brought on Milner for Henderson just to sort of control that midfield. Bringing on Daka for Firmino just for rotation purposes. But giving Bobby Firmino a well deserved rest. Same with Minamino for Salah just to keep him nice and fresh. And we do go on to beat Wolves 2 0. And bag those three very important points away from home. Right, guys, and here we are, back at the Central for the final time in today's episode. Gundawan grabs September Player of the Month award. I thought it was going to Bobby Firmino. You know, he's currently top with eight goals. Unfortunately, he scored some of them in October, and I'm sure if Bobby keeps the form that he's in right now, he'll certainly pick up Player of the Month in October. Gundawan, who is a central midfielder, sometimes plays a central defensive midfielder for Manchester City, has got seven goals. He's absolutely bossing it. We've currently got Gini Wijnaldum down in eighth place on four. Bobby Firmino top with eight. Really happy with how we're uh, playing at the moment. Unfortunately, due to a couple of slip-ups like against Leicester and Lazio. But unfortunately, it's just games like that where sometimes it's just not meant to be. We are ending today's episode. Top of the Premier League. We are one point ahead of West Ham. West Ham must have dropped points. We've now overtook them by one point. Three points on Manchester City. And between them, Spurs, Leicester and Chelsea, we are absolutely flying. You look at Chelsea down in sixth position on the bottom cusp of a European spot and they're on 12 points. 12 points. That is, that is crazy. Nine points behind us in first. We're already making such a massive impact between us and sort of the Europa places, fifth and sixth. We're already making huge movements there. Six points ahead of Leicester City. Really happy with how we're playing. We dropped down after the Lazio game, back to a 66 overall manager. We're now back to a 68. We were 67. We are ending today's episode higher, or at the highest point we have been over the last couple of episodes. But before we end on today's episode, let's go over to the calendar and check out the games for the next episode. We have a lovely, lovely full week off now. Then a full second week until we take on for our first game, Sheffield United at home in the Premier League. We then take on voluntary in our third game in our Champions League group stage. We'll need to bounce back after that horrible loss to Lazio and show the fans, players around the world, you guys at home, the media, that we are Liverpool. We will bounce back and we will dominate against Voluntary. And then, of course, we're back at home to take on Brighton, who we nearly signed their keeper, Matt Ryan. Hopefully, he doesn't cause us too many problems and regret me, unfortunately, not going in for him and buying him. If he manages to keep us out on the day, it will be a massive loss for us or, at more the fact, potentially a massive draw. But the way we're playing in the Premier League right now is really good. Really happy with how the players are playing. We seem to be playing well in the simulated games. We've bounced back. We've got a clean sheet. We scored two goals. I think we've certainly got to concentrate now, especially now as we're looking to push on on these Premier League games. So we are going to play the Sheffield United game at home. We're then going to simulate the game against Voluntari at home in the Champions League group stage. I think we should really do a job over them. And that leaves, of course, the last game in the next episode of Brighton, which we will be playing. Hopefully we can bag the six points in the Premier League, the three points in the Champions League, catch back up to Lazio. Hopefully, next round, when we play all these three teams again in our group, when we play Lazio again, when Voluntari play Lazio, when Sion play Lazio, hopefully one of them can stop them in their tracks, get a win over them, we can sort of get back to level terms with them and look to push on. I would have thought it should be us and Lazio that do go through to the knockout stages, but anything can happen in football. And I'm just going to go and check, actually, because we didn't see how the other game got on in our Champions League group stage. So, it was Voluntari that actually beat Sion. Now, in the next game, uh, next episode, we play Voluntari, so we should get a win there, taking us off to six points. Lazio take on FC Sion. They're probably going to get three points there as well, so they should be on nine. We should be on six. Voluntari should then be left on three. As long as we win our next game, which is going to be against... So we have volunteer. We play voluntarily twice. We play them on the bounce. As long as we win both of those games, and Sion potentially hold Lazio in one of their games, we're potentially in a great spot here to sort of simulate the rest of the Champions League group stage games and hopefully go on to get a place in the knockout stages. That is the important thing that we must do. We've got to get through to the knockouts, otherwise we're going to be in serious trouble. But hey. We end today's episode, top of the Premier League. I really can't complain. We're playing great football at the moment. Yes, we're having a couple of hiccups. We're still adjusting to the team, how it plays, sort of the new roles that I want players to do. We're changing slight tactics from what Klopp used to do. We're getting used to the new mechanics and things like that. So 
It will take a little bit of time, but I think how we've started this Liverpool cream mode is unbelievable. It's a bit of a, a shame that my rating is so low, but I'm sure we'll start building that up as we now are top of the Premier League. We're pushing on in the Champions League. We'll show in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup that we're here to do business. But I am excited for the rest of this Liverpool cream mode. Really excited. Every time I record an episode, I'm really excited. I'm ready to go. You can see I'm wearing the black goalkeeper kit this time round. I'm obviously going to rotate between this kit and the Liverpool home kit, just depending on what I feel like wearing and also which one is in the wash. But uh, I think that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below. Don't forget to ding-dong that bell. And I have been Master Brad. Peace out.